Hey, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Happily Ever After Hours podcast. I'm your host, Colton Simmons, and today I have with me Danielle Holleran of Details and Swirls. Thank you for joining me, Danielle. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be on. Yeah, it's. I feel like you know, seeing you doing your podcasting for a while has got me uh, super excited to have started this this venture. So, thank you for joining us. Uh, for those listening in today, we're gonna go into a little bit of Danielle and who she is and what she does with with her business, and also go over the the different things that we do as small business owners in the wedding industry to be able to balance work life. So, without further ado, Danielle, if you want to share who you are and what you do at Details and Swirls. Of course. Well, hello, everyone. My name is Danielle, and I'm the owner of Details and Swirls. And I feel like I always kind of pause whenever I'm asked the question, like, oh, what do you do? Because it's like, how long do you have? There's so much that it that goes into my business nowadays, but I can kind of rewind and get started just explaining how I even came about owning my business and running my business and kind of what that looked like diving into the wedding industry. So I am from Rhode Island. I am married. And when I was planning my wedding, I've always been really creative and I've always loved weddings. I always thought it would be fun to work in the wedding and industry in some capacity, but I just didn't know, you know, what that would look like. I always wanted to own my own business one day, but I just didn't know what that would be. So whenever I was planning my wedding, and this was back in 2017 leading up to my wedding, I decided I wanted to make all the signs for my wedding. I loved signage. I loved mirrors and I wanted to just DIY and do them all myself. So I started teaching myself hand lettering, which is kind of like calligraphy in a way, but on a larger scale on different surfaces. So leading up to my wedding in 2017, that whole year, I just practiced and practiced hand lettering so I could make my signs. We got married in September of 2018. I made all the signage for my wedding. I absolutely loved the entire process of just designing everything and I just loved every part of it that after my wedding, I missed it. I, you know, had spent the whole entire year learning this new skill and creating and making all of these pieces. And I thought, you know what, what if I started a little business on the side, you know, doing signage here in Rhode Island, and then also starting a small Etsy shop. And I started up my business just a couple months after my wedding in September. I started in December of 2018 and hit the ground running that first wedding season 2019 doing deliveries here in Rhode Island for wedding rentals. So a little bit of what I do within the wedding industry now and what I started with are mirrored wedding sign rentals. So basically I have an entire rental collection of mirrors and different pieces that I personalize and rent out for different weddings. So I do large seating charts, welcome signs, table numbers, a whole assortment of different signs and the writing is removable. So every single weekend or every wedding, you know, I write whatever the client wants on their pieces and then I can remove it and reuse the piece for the next wedding. So I am now going into my fifth season of wedding rentals here in Rhode Island, which is absolutely crazy. And along with that, I've also grown the other sides of my business as well. So I started off with a small little Etsy shop doing wedding signs, and now I have moved over completely to my own website, doing a whole assortment of different custom pieces, both within weddings and then also you know in home nursery seasonal collections a whole bunch of things so it's really just been a wonderful journey that's awesome and uh kind of to bounce back a little bit what were you doing prior to hand lettering were you in the art field at all or were you you know completely opposite spectrum of the uh workforce complete opposite spectrum of the workforce so i actually majored in accounting I got my undergrad degree in accounting, got my MBA. I sat for all my CPA exams, passed my CPA exams, and started work at a big, one of the big accounting firms in Boston. And I absolutely hated it. This was before I got married. Hated it. Didn't know what I wanted to do, but I would tell everyone, I'm like, I don't know what I want to do, but I want to do the complete opposite of this, which is what I ended up basically doing. But 
I switched to a smaller firm and switched departments of accounting the year before I got married. So I entered into tax accounting and a small firm in Providence. And again, didn't like it. It just wasn't my thing. And at that time, after we had gotten married was when I started my business, which I absolutely fell in love with. And I never thought when I started my business, it could actually be a full-time gig for me. I thought, you know, like maybe one day, you know, five, 10 years from now, if I can grow my business to a certain point, I can take it full-time. And really within a year of starting, so the fall of 2019, I couldn't do both anymore. And, you know, it's a whole long thing. There's so many things that were involved, but basically in accounting, our busy season is January through April. So I knew I needed to stay on at least through April of 2020. So I kind of pushed through, hustled through doing really two full, full-time jobs for yeah. that amount of time. Pandemic hit, you know, I didn't even know if I could take my business full time when I had planned because all of my weddings got pushed, but everything ended up working out the way that it needed to. And I did leave my corporate job in May of 2020 to take my business full time. And now I've been full time for three years, which is just insane. <laughs> that is. And for someone who, you know, I remember working our first wedding together in 2019, which was your pretty much inaugural Just year mm -hmm. um to see how much you've grown uh to say the least has been astounding you know you you went from being you know me just meeting you in 2019 to over 70,000 followers on Instagram. <laughs> you have your own podcast, you have your own book, you have your own courses, all these other things that we'll, we'll talk about here shortly. Um, what has it been like, especially going from, you know, such a different world, like you're in the accounting world, you're working with numbers to now being, you know, your own business owner, you're at home now running your business and all of the things that go along with it. It's been great. And of course, you know, there's hard times and difficult times as a small business owner, but I always felt when I had my corporate job and when I was working in accounting, like that just something just didn't feel right. And I was always so unsettled because I knew that it just wasn't the path for me. Like I would see the higher ups in my company and how passionate they were about their jobs. And I just would always feel so unsettled like this, they're something just isn't right. And when I made that switch and took the leap to take my business full time and pursue this dream of mine, that anxiety in me just completely was gone. Like I finally felt like I was doing what I was meant to do and what I was so passionate about. And it wasn't this conflicting pull anymore of my emotions. And I felt like I was living two different lives and it's just, I have so much more peace now taking on my business and doing what I love. And of course, you know, it's not to say that every single day is easy, but the hard days make it so much more worth it when you're working for yourself, when you're pushing towards your goals and doing what you love rather than the hard days when you're in a position where the harder you work, you're not even getting closer to kind of your vision. So that's kind of how I approach my days now and kind of my overall outlook of that transition to taking my business full time. Definitely. I can relate with that on so many different levels. I, I tell people all the time that for those who take the entrepreneurial road, we are those types of people who we, we sat there and we saw no matter how hard we were working, we were always building somebody else's dream, knowing that there was a dream deep within inside of us that like was un, how do I say this? It wasn't being fed. It wasn't being grown. It wasn't being taken care of the way that it properly needed to. And every person that's made the choice that you and I have made to walk away from that corporate job and to, to put our efforts into growing the business, it wasn't until we stepped away that the business actually became what we had always envisioned it. And if not bigger and better than what we envisioned it because we're able to actually incubate the baby and, and, and grow it in a way that it, it, it meant it was meant to be. So definitely resonate with that a lot. So outside of what you do with uh, your your bridal stuff, you 
you design jackets for brides, you design signs for, for wedding days, mm -hmm. you do so many different things. What are some of the other things that you've added onto your repertoire in the last few years as well? Yeah, so I kind of break my business down into like five different areas. So I, one of the largest areas that I focus on is my custom pieces. So this kind of encompasses mostly custom signage. I do a lot of not only wedding signage, like acrylic based signs that I uh, package and ship all over the country, but a lot of custom home signage. So think wooden signs, last name signs, a lot of signs for gifts and things like that. We hand make all of our own wooden signs that we've self taught us. We're not, you know, woodworkers, my husband and I, my husband has his own full-time job too, but um, we do a lot of wooden signage and just a lot of custom pieces. Like, as you mentioned, aside from signs, I do custom jackets, different kind of one-off custom pieces. I'll do a little launch of custom bags or custom pumpkins around the holidays. You know, it depends seasonally. I have another section of my business where I have different collections that I offer all the time that are not customized. So a lot of different seasonal collections with, you know, Christmas signs, fall signs, spring signs, things like that, uh, baby collections with baby signs, baby blankets, and things like that. I, of course, have my wedding rentals side of my business, which we chatted about and will continue to chat about. I also have my pop-up shops that I do seasonally, whether they be at other local small businesses or kind of online pop-up shops uh, that I do each season. And then lastly, the last section of my business are my small business resources. So this has been an area that I have really loved growing over the past couple of years as I've gained a wider audience of fellow small business owners looking to pursue their dreams. And I've been able to help you know, so many people on their own path. So I offer a couple different courses. I offer a lot of different lettering specific materials. So lettering worksheets. I came out with a hand lettering book earlier this year and I have my podcast kind of under this umbrella too. So I dabble in a lot of different areas, but those are more or less like the five different components of my business. That is so awesome. And it's so encouraging as somebody who also has multifacets of my own business. Now, do you feel like it's this just this thing that like you do, you start something and you're like, you start it for a while. You're obviously still passionate about it, but you're like, all right, I need to start something else. Like, I feel like that tends to be the thing for me. This year was my first year of launching officially my education portion of things with a course and a mentoring program. And then six months later, I'm like, I want to start a podcast. And here I am now doing a podcast. Do you feel like you're at a place now where you're fulfilled in all the things that you do or are you still like looking to go outside of what you're doing and continue to get your feet like wet in other situations? I would love to say that I'm fulfilled in everything that I'm doing now, but I just think we have that in us, like that entrepreneur passion that it's like, oh, well, what's on to what's on to the next thing? What's on to the next thing? I do love where my business is at right now. I've never been kind of more confident in my different offerings and just the makeup of everything that I am very happy about the different directions that I'm going in. And for the future, there are, you know, goals and dreams I have within the different directions that I've already established. Not to say that I don't think of things completely outside of the realm of what I'm doing on a daily basis of, oh, maybe I could do this. If you ask my assistant, she helps package my orders and things. I feel like once a week I go downstairs to her and I'm like, okay, don't think I'm crazy, but I have a new idea. And she's <laughs> like, okay. Um, so I think it's just fun, you know, even in the position that we're in that if you do have an idea, there really isn't much stopping you from trying to pursue it. It's like there are so many things that you can just try out. I think that my hardest problem right now is reeling those ideas in and being realistic and thinking, okay, let's think, you know, long term, is this something that I want to pursue and trying to find my path? But, you know, my mind still wanders and dreams all the time. <laughs> and, and with you saying that, I think that's the perfect segue into the topic of today's podcast. And that is how do we as entrepreneurs in the wedding industry 
balance work and life. And I know having all these ideas, every time I come up with a new idea, that's a conversation I have with my wife and we're like, okay, so how can we actually manage that and not take away from the value uh, that we provide for our family? Because I don't know if this is something that you desired, but I know long term something before my wife and I even had children, our biggest discussion was how can we create a life in which we are going to be the most present with our children. And I know that the more and more I get busy with my business, I either have to hire somebody to help me or it's going to pull me away from that initial goal of being fully involved in the development of our children. Because it's one thing, at least for us, and this isn't for everyone, we knew that we always wanted to be the ones that invested the most time in our children. We didn't want to send them off to to school and have somebody else raise them uh and everyone has their own life positions their own life goals but for us we knew we wanted to be intentional in in raising our children and to be able to give them experiences that we didn't have growing up so what would you say are some of the unique challenges that you faced in balancing work and life because you have a 10 month old Mm -hmm. correct so how has that change in your life been uh adding a child into the mix and and keeping the goals that you have for your family's life in line with, you know, making sure that their needs and wants and desires are also brought into the sphere of things. It's been crazy. And I feel like I've been learning every day and every week ever since my son was born. I started work back up 10 weeks after he was born. I took a little bit of a maternity leave and everything that I had known about work-life balance that I had set up previously, because I was like the queen of work-life balance for my business before. Like I had my boundaries in place. I had my systems in place. I was so strict with myself and things were like perfectly balanced. And then after having my baby and now I am full-time stay at home with him and full-time business owners, this isn't like, you know, my side hustle or anything. Like it is a full-time yeah. business. Things were just completely and totally flipped upside down. And it took me a very long time to kind of relearn how I do things and how I work and that it's okay to have those lines kind of blurred for the season of life that I'm in right now because before, you know, having a baby, I would never work on the weekends. I would never work at night. I had, you know, these strict rules in place around my schedule. And now kind of my perspective on how I approach my work-life balance has changed so much in that I feel so grateful that I'm able to have the flexibility that I do have in my schedule that I can work at night, that I can Mm -hmm. work on the weekends so that I can spend those moments during the days with him that he does need me and he needs my full attention and my time. And of course, things are ever changing. I feel like in the routine I'm in, like in this very moment for the past couple of weeks, you know, he's been napping longer, which he never did up until this moment. And I feel like I now have this even more newfound freedom of balance. And I haven't had to work at night for the past couple of weeks because, you know, time has just been working out in my favor. But a couple months ago, I was working every single morning. I was working every single night. You know, I had less time with my husband. I had less time for myself. And I think it's just taken me a while to just come to the understanding. And I think this is just everything with parenthood and entrepreneurship that nothing is forever. And just because, you know, the balance may be thrown off for a couple days or a couple weeks or a couple months, like it doesn't mean that's how it's going to be forever. And just trying to find the times in those difficult periods and difficult moments to prioritize the things that are important to you, whether that be, you know, some time for yourself, some time uh, with your spouse, whatever the case may be. But just knowing that, you know, it's not forever and we are grateful, at least I feel, you know, so grateful to be in the position of flexibility that I am and just trying to remind myself in those tough times, like it's a privilege to live this life and have that flexibility even though it can feel very much all consuming and overwhelming at times. Definitely. I, I, I find so many takeaways from what you just said, because 
to truly have work-life balance in this entrepreneurial uh, path that we're in, it's not like this set in stone, okay, the kids are going to sleep at this time and I'm going to get work d- done at this time. It's like their needs are going to come first and we're going to try to make it work. So if it means that Tuesday is my scheduled office days where I, I edit photos from 8 to you know 4, if it if it means my, my daughter's not feeling well this morning, maybe that means I help my wife a little bit extra so that things are, are done so she could take care of my daughter and I'm helping or for instance today we had you know a dentist appointment for the girls before uh, I was supposed to you know get all my editing done and and making those shifts and things because I have the ability to have had I had a full-time job still and I'm trying to you know invest in my family this way my work-life balance would would look a lot different so like you said we have to take it like as a with an attitude of gratitude that we get to have this flexibility to be able to invest in our children's lives and if it means we make that sacrifice as a parent to stay up a little bit later than we would like to or in my case I like to wake up before everyone in the house Mm -hmm. is is awake at like four in the morning I'm up like responding to to brides and they must be like why am I getting emails (laughs) at four in the morning but you know it's just the things that make the most sense for me to be able to be present with with my family so um and with you, you know, join in, join in. I'm going to, I'm going to take a sip from my Stanley <laughs> as well here. I completely uh, agree with that though. And I've also found, you know, I feel like I've just been relearning my whole work-life balance through all of this, but kind of on the flip side, I think that the extreme flexibility that I do have in my business and in my day-to-day routine I have needed to reel in a little bit because everyone knows that I'm the flexible one. You know, my husband is a police officer. He works crazy hours, crazy shifts, and, you know, there's no real flexibility in his job. So when things need to get done or, you know, anything with the baby, of course I can be flexible because I work for myself and I can make my own schedule. And I've realized, you know, especially over those first few months that, all right, I need to have a block of, you know, a little bit of help that I know, you know, Wednesdays at this time is my work time and kind of setting up a little bit of a schedule for myself, even if it's just a couple hours a week where I know this is my time that I can work has been so beneficial to me because, you know, the work still needs to get done and flying by the seat of your pants every day when you have a three, four month, five month old baby, you know, it it can be very stressful when the work has to get done and you'll get it done whenever you need to, but kind of working in those blocks of time, again, even just a couple hours a week was so beneficial for me. I started that in the new year, my mother-in-law, four hours a week would come over and you would have thought that I had full-time childcare. I was like, this (laughs) is awesome. It just made all the difference in the world. And now I've slowly but surely added in, you know, a couple hours here, a couple hours there, whenever, you know, I can get help and schedule things in. And it's just helped me create a little bit of a schedule and predictability with what I'm able to get done in my business. That's amazing. That's amazing. But just you wait until uh, those little legs start oh, walking yeah. <laughs> because it, it becomes a whole new um, a whole uh-huh. new field. Our newest thing with our youngest, she just started crawling out of her crib. So yeah. if people can hear a child not crawling out of her crib, she's climbing out of her mm-hmm. crib and getting out of her room. So if you can hear a little one running in this recording or yelling in the background, she keeps escaping nap time. And my wife just had to come down and shut my office door because I forgot to close it before recording. Recording, but it's just to give you guys all like you know like real life examples of like where I'm managing work life balance right now filming this podcast and trying to do it during my children's nap time so that I'm not doing it while they're awake and I'm able to put my work away and and maybe go outside and have my four year old or my three year old going to be four year old you know ride her bike with her training wheels outside in this nice weather that we have so it's it's always a constant shift and making sure that like you said we're always still getting work done because obviously the business won't continue to grow and won't continue to even maintain if we're not still feeding the fire every day so Mm -hmm. could you I know you've kind of talked about a strategy of having like the four hours a week can you give me maybe some other strategies that you use to balance work life yeah so I found what 
really helped me, especially in those first early few months where days were just completely and totally unpredictable, was having a weekly to-do list instead of a daily to-do list because there were some days that I got absolutely no work done, just the way the cards fell. And then there were other days that I could get way more work done. And there's no predicting, you know, at all how my day was going to go. So if I had a weekly to-do list that I could chip away at, you know, as the week went on, it was a lot more manageable for me when planning out my days or, you know, whether I needed to work in the morning or at night to accomplish everything that was on my weekly list. So that really helped me. It's something that I still do and kind of go by that allows me flexibility within my days. And another thing that really helped me, again, especially in the early days, my son, he's never been a good napper up until the past couple of weeks, knock on all of the wood. He, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, on the dot for as long as I can remember. So, you know, I would hear people talk all the time who, you know, worked for themselves or worked at home, like, oh, you just get it done in their two hour nap block. And I'm like, what, what <laughs> two hour nap block are you talking about? So what I would do is I knew, you know, I had a limited amount of time during his naps and I would just make sure that I had everything set up and ready to go that I needed, that I wanted to work on during that time. So. I had found that, you know, by the time I put him down, came downstairs, got my stuff set up, I had like 10 minutes to work before he was up. So I would just be very intentional about really setting up exactly what I wanted to accomplish during the time of his napping that I had and make sure that everything was lined up and ready to go. So at the second I put him down, I could immediately start working and really make the most out of my time. And I just found that that helped me so, so much, especially during, you know, those first five, six months of trying to manage my days. So that along with the weekly schedule helped me get into a little bit of a groove. Definitely. So with the weekly schedule, I feel like that is also a more fulfilling way to do things as well, because if you have a daily checklist and you only get one out of 10 items done (laughs) at the end of the day, you kind of feel defeated. And, you know, it's like I would say being a business owner and a parent is like a roller coaster. You go through these days where you're like you're getting so much done. You feel on top of the world like your kids ate all their meals. You were able to play outside and you're like, wow, like today was such an amazing day. And then you have those other days where it's like every every way you turn, there's a disaster. You're getting an email from a bride letting you know that her venue can't have weddings because there was a fire at it. And you're trying to manage all these fires yourself in your life. And you get like one thing accomplished and you're just like, wow, I feel like a failure. My business is not going to make it out of this year. Uh, what would you say with all of that, uh, you know, what would you say is the, the one thing that has helped you contribute to the growth and success of your business that has been a a maintenance of the work-life balance like what's one of the things that you've implemented that you've said wow since I put this back into my life now having a child like has seen my business grow the most I think that one mindset wise would just be and I think I kind of like touched on this before maybe in a different wording is like a day is just a day like It's very difficult, especially in the world of small business and in the world of parenthood to not think that, you know, one bad day is going to be forever. Like you just think in those moments like that it's just going to be forever. I remember, you know, in those earlier days when I could never get my son to fall asleep, I'd just be rocking him to sleep. I wouldn't be able to be working. I'd be crying and be like, this is it. My business is going to fail because I'm just never going to have time, you know, to work on anything. And in reality, like it was just a bad moment. It wasn't like how it's going to be forever. So that would be kind of like the mindset shift that has really helped allow me to just take a step back and take every day for as it is. And then in terms of like actionable things, I would say what's really helped me, especially in this season of life in this past year, is really focusing on things that are pushing my business forward. Because when you have limited time, now that I'm a parent, you know, I don't have time to work on stuff for fun or work on stuff because like 
it's my passion and try out this and try out that. And while that's all great and I encourage people to just try new things in their business, I've had to get very serious about the new endeavors that I take on, the new investments that I take on. Every decision in my business is very calculated now and intentional. Whereas before, you know, I was trying this thing and trying that and I just, you know, had time in the world and resources to uh, experiment and play around. Whereas now all of my decisions are very calculated and intentional. And I do feel like it's actually in turn really helped my business because now everything that I'm doing has a direct end goal and is much more well thought out. Not that I was so willy nilly before, but you know, you just have a completely different lens and outlook now that you have limited time and you know that every decision has to have an end goal now that you're a parent. Definitely. I can relate with that because for myself, this was the year that I told myself that I'm not going to be doing small sessions anymore. So I'm going to completely focus on weddings. And, you know, if if I have a past client that maybe wants a family session or a maternity session, I'll fit them in when I can. But I'm not like seeking out new business in the family maternity, like small session world anymore, because those Weekday afternoons become so limited when I'm shooting two weddings on a weekend and I'm preparing for those weddings. And the further I'm getting into the wedding industry, they aren't just small weddings anymore. So I need to make sure that I have everything absolutely prepared in more of a fashion than I had to in the past. So for me, me cutting back on that has really helped me balance my work life because I'm not out shooting five sessions in a week and then two weddings on the weekend and then having no time for my family. And the way that I look at that is by cutting back those smaller sessions, I have now more time to invest in, you know, my education side of the business, which, you know, for me, when I weigh out the pros and the cons, like if I spent the time, you know, to book family sessions that I am now booking students in my mentoring program, I get to now have another avenue of being able to work from home and to still be able to pour into somebody else's business and to be able to see them blossom. And then in turn, I can say, hey, I don't shoot family sessions, but check out one of the students in my program. Their work's amazing. And I can put a stamp of approval that I've shown them everything that I did to grow my business. So I know that they're going to take care of you just as well as I would. So uh, definitely can relate with you there. Do you have anything else that you'd like to add to that? Totally. You know, aspect? Yeah, no, I completely agree. There's been areas of my business that I've needed to cut out that I did before. You know, I went on maternity leave and sometimes I'll get questions like, hey, are you bringing, you know, this area back or that area? And it's like, you know what, for the time being, no. And my business hasn't really seen, you know, there were no negatives that came out of cutting out areas that weren't fully benefiting my schedule, my business, and just where I'm headed for the future. And I think it's really been great that it has forced me to have this really crystal clarity on my vision and where I see my business heading. And it's just like lit a fire under me for my goals just in a beautiful way. Definitely. And what would you say you would give advice to somebody who's an entrepreneur? Maybe they're expecting their first child or they're about to get married and add a whole new dynamic to their life or they have a child and they're struggling with work-life balance. Is there any advice that you would give them to be able to apply practically to their business to you know, see them through on the other side to have a more positive outlook on life or maybe a positive impact on their business and family life? Definitely. I feel like with any change – in schedule or life, whether that be like you said, getting married, you know, moving, switching jobs, and uh, becoming a parent, like with any big change, just comes a lot of stress and anxiety because you're relearning, you know, how you do things. I know me myself, I love my routine. You know, I like to be set in my ways. I don't love change. It you know throws everything off kilter. But what I would recommend is just having some time set aside in your schedule even if it's one hour a week like have something written down that you cannot waver on that is time devoted to 
your business, for you to reset, for you to, you know, whether it's planning out your week or whatever that may be, just setting aside that time for you. I remember when I was working my full-time corporate job and doing this on the side too, I would was kind of going through the same feelings that I'm experiencing now of now having two full-time jobs of being a mom and running a business. And I felt that back a few years ago too. And it helped me then just to have a couple hours of this is my devoted business time. And even just that is going to help you get a little bit closer to your next goal and a little bit closer, even if you're not moving at the pace that you want to be moving at, you know, down the line, baby steps are better than anything. So that would be my biggest advice. And just knowing that your position isn't permanent, like in whatever position you're in, in the depths of like the hardest times of the imbalance and trying to figure everything out, like it seems like it's going to be like that forever, but it won't. So just trying to ride the wave the best that you can. I think that's amazing advice. And if I could add a little bit onto that, I would say not only spending that time once a week or a few times a week, just like devoted time to the business, also having that time devoted to just like yourself and to like things that are unbusiness related, un, you know, child wrangling <laughs> related, yeah. or, you know, just that decompression time is so, so important. And that's something that at least myself and my wife were trying to bake into our life more. We've lived in our house now for five years. And this was the first year, like I would say, I want to say it was like a week ago that after the kids went down, we had recently set up lights on our deck outside. We got a little like fire pit table and, and some some furniture and we just sat out on the on the porch and we like watched a tv show on the ipad and just enjoyed like being in our yard and i was like you know this is the first time we've ever been outside at our house this late and it, it just goes to show like how unbalanced our life was for so long and to sit back and take that realization i knew that the, the decisions that we've been talking about making and been making in our lives is only going to benefit us. It's going to benefit our children. It's going to benefit our business because if we're not filling our cups, we're constantly trying to pour out into others with an empty cup. And when that happens, burnout's inevitable and mm -hmm. everything's going to suffer. So definitely make sure you're taking that time uh, for yourself as well. Oh, definitely. I could not agree more. It is so important. And I feel like I'm the worst. I'm like, do as I say, not as I do. Cause I, you know, it's hard. It is hard, uh, trying to balance it all and create time for yourself, but it is so important. And I also find that, you know, cause we feel guilty, like, Oh, well, I have so much to do. You know, I could be working now instead of, you know, sitting on the couch or doing this, but in reality, that rest and reset time for yourself is only going to help you be a better business owner and run your business better with a clearer mind and be more creative. Like that is helping you and it's helping your business, even though it may not be measurable, like it is. And it is so important to just fill yourself up with the thing, the important things in life. You know, that's why we are running our business in the first place so that we have the ability to enjoy those things. So we need to take advantage of that and enjoy that time. <laughs> uh, definitely. Now, do you have any resources that have helped you being a new mom and a business owner or anything like that, that helped you with your work-life balance? You know, <laughs> not in particular. I think that it's so hard because it really is just so different for everyone and while a lot of you know parents and business owners can encounter the same struggles i think that just day to day it's really just so incredibly different someone one person's journey and something that may have helped them you can try because i know i've tried oh well maybe i'll do this well maybe i'll you know do that and things haven't worked for me one like practical thing that i will say worked really well for me um, was wrapping my baby when he was probably like six months and under. Some people swear by, you know, wearing their babies. Other people, their babies never napped when they wore them. Again, completely and totally just depends. But for me and my personal experience, 
I wouldn't have gotten a lick of work done if I couldn't, if my baby didn't nap with me because I would wrap him up. And those days that he, you know, wouldn't want to nap, I'd wrap him up. He would nap on me. I'd stand up at my kitchen island and work on signs and write ornaments and answer emails. You know, like I had mentioned, I'd get my workstation all set up. And right when he fell asleep, wrapped to me, I would get to work. And as an actual like practical resource, that baby wrap was my coworker for like six months and an absolute lifesaver. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, I am thinking of just like when our children were, were very small, uh, it was during, uh, you know, 2020. So at that time I was still working from home for my full-time job. And for me, I would just like as soon as my my oldest was down for a nap like you said i would run my computer i would be getting like video editing done for my full-time job uh answering emails like getting as much as i could get done in that short amount of time and then it was like as soon as they woke up it was like all right gotta pull back again and go back into dad mode but if i can think of a few resources myself that i like to utilize or listen to uh i listen to uh my uh digital income family which is uh, Haley and Doug Johnson and their uh, entrepreneurial family, they all, uh, you know, they they work from home running their businesses. Uh, she's a YouTuber and a mom, mom influencer that helps moms uh, with their journey through motherhood as well as helping, you know, they're both a family that run businesses from home. So they're a great resource in how to balance work life. Uh, and it's I think it's the um, now that we're a family podcast as well, just two, you know, resources that if you need someone to listen to who is going through a journey of what you are and you really enjoyed what we talked about this is kind of what they talk about all the time on on their uh, platforms so before we wrap up uh, do you have any final thoughts on you know this new journey that you're on and trying to understand work-life balance as as a mom and also where everyone would be able to find you in the case that they want to listen to your podcast find out about your courses and uh, maybe make some purchases for their upcoming wedding of course well my podcast is the detailed diary podcast and you can find that over on detaildiarypodcast.com or on Instagram at detaildiarypodcast. And then as for my business, Details and Swirls, you can find that at Details and Swirls on all social media platforms and detailsandswirls.com. But my kind of just lasting advice and lasting notes would just be that if you are in, you know, a season of overwhelm or entering a season of uncertainty, whether that be, you know, adding on another job or adding on the role of parenthood, just know that, you know, things may not be easy, but it is doable. I think that one of the things that I struggled with so much before becoming a mom is just the unknown of like, well, what's it going to be like? Am I going to be able to do this? Like, will I be able to handle it? You know, so many people on the internet want to be like, oh, well, you'll never be able to do this. You'll never be able to do that. Just wait until this, that, it, you, it's impossible. And it's very hard, you know, but not everything in life was made to be easy, especially in the world of entrepreneurship. If you are already running your small business, you already can do hard things. So I just think it's becoming flexible and just, I've found that the greatest freedom with kind of tackling the overwhelm that comes with all of this is just letting go of control and just rolling with what is dealt to you. I think that that is mostly like the biggest battle of it all is just releasing that control and once you release that control, it's like, oh, it, a whole new world opens up to you and the days may be longer and you may be more stressed, but everything goes in waves and it is possible. Nothing at all is impossible. And I will just leave it with that because it's just, you can do it. <laughs> That is the perfect way to put it. I heard somebody wise tell me once that you can only control the square four feet around you and everything outside of that, you have to just roll with it. So it's a matter of, you know, looking at how you control yourself mm -hmm. in the midst of adversity. And like you said, as small business owners, we know that it's not easy. We have those days sometimes where you book three weddings in a day and you're like, wow, like things are great. And then you have that three week period where you're not even getting inquiries and you're like, is this all going to, you know, 
go under and to have that constant ebb and flow is a way that i feel like you know at least you know the people like you and i who are small business owners and entrepreneurs we're just built to kind of battle through that storm and allow our, our boats to to stay afloat through that so wherever you are in your your seasons whether you're just a single person who is running a business and a full-time job and you're trying to find work-life balance just keep sticking through it just just keep working at it because this isn't the end you know it's not you do these next two weeks and that's it you, there's going to be those weeks where you get relief and there's going to be those months where you have an easier time at things and you get systems and automation set up mm -hmm. in your life to make your life more easy so I, I think I'll leave it at that. Uh, and before we wrap up here, as I do in every episode, I'm going to shamelessly plug my mentoring program. So if you are a photographer or you know a photographer that is in need of help in growing their photography business and want to move from working a full-time job and running their business or just want to see an overall growth in the amount of business they do, don't hesitate to reach out to me and find out more about my Pathway to Full-Time Photography program. And uh, I look forward to hearing from you guys in DM. Shoot me messages on uh, Instagram or on my website at coltonsimmons.com and again Danielle I want to thank you again for hopping on here and talking about the, the ebbs and flows of parenthood while running a small business and uh, make sure everyone goes and checks out her podcast uh, she gives a lot of entrepreneurial advice and uh, all of that as well on her podcast so until the next one I will see you guys then. Thank you.